The idea of horror has always been a thing that has always been prevalent when it comes to novels. So, let's talk about a Edgar Allan Poe film. And in this case, we're ta we're looking at it being done by the the B movie film king himself, Roger Corman. Greetings and salutations. How's everybody doing? So today, looking at the film House of Usher also known as the fall of the house of usher which is based on a uh, story by Edgar Allan Poe what makes this film a little bit different than its source material besides just being stretch to feature a film link and that originally in the film um the narrator of the of the story is best friends childhood friends of Roderick Hester but in this case it is the um fiance eh, of Madeline Usher who basically has come and say hey um, where, how have you been? Are you doing okay? And in his way, trying to get, take her home. However, at times, her brother, Roderick Usher, is basically saying, Hey, my sister is unwell. And he's unwell, too, in the fact that he has... He, he has a lot of, like, fears. He, he believes his, his long line of family has been sick. Thief, usurer, merchant of flesh, Bernard Asher, swindler, forger, Jew thief, drug addict. In a way, so he believes that both he and his sister will eventually die of causes. So, I gotta say, um, this film was done. What I really love about this film, honestly, I love films of the 1960s. Mostly because sometimes they have the use of technicolor. And my god, this film is gorgeously colorful. This land was fertile. Farms abounded. Earth yielded her riches at harvest time. There were trees and plant life. Flowers, fields of grain. There was great beauty here. At that time, this water was clear and fresh. Swans glided upon its crystal surface. And I know you're probably thinking, like, an Edgar Allan Poe story that's colorful. I mean, yeah, that sounds very strange. But honestly, the the use of color for this film makes this world pop. And that whether it is moments where, like, say, Philip is going down to the underground parts of the house to try to find Madeline. Madeline! No! Let me go! Only the incomparable genius of Edgar Allan Poe could knit them so closely together. I mean, that sequence is haunting with its use of blues. And, like, use of sound. I mean, you don't really hear the characters go, like, screaming or anything until he actually wakes up and it's, really, it's been a dream. And, yeah, I mean, there are some similarities. The story is similar to, like, say, to um, the Telltale Heart and the fact that someone is buried alive. In this case, Madeline. And... Honestly, uh, like, the, the entire film is, like, Mar like uh, Philip is trying to get Madeline out of there so that they can, in a way, start the life again. And I think that, I mean, I really like, I like Ben Surprise films. I think they're always very entertaining. They always have a sense of either horror or a sense of, like, grandiose to it would be a word. 
While I was riding here, I noticed a singular lack of vegetation in the area. Is there something wrong with the soil? The soil? Yes, of course. Patrick, please. As you will. And, um, honestly, I, feel, I still think, he, like, the costume design for this film is honestly really nice. It looks really good. It's gonna be, I'm a person who really loves the world of theater and all that. Um, so yeah, I think this film has great use of costuming, great use of cinematography. And I gotta say, the House of Usher itself is honestly really cool in the fact it looks like a giant thing. And that also, like, same time, it's crumbling in itself, like, it's having sounds and all that. Don't you think that crack in the wall should be repaired? For future generations of ushers. For Honestly, I think it'd be pretty cool if they knew the A House of Usher show from Mike Flanagan took inspiration from this film, too. And that it, like, you know, instead of, like, you know, more, uh, muted color tones, it had more of a vibrant color tone to it. And because that's one thing I always have issues. I mean, I love Mike Flanagan as a director when he does projects, but I do sometimes think that he sometimes will have, like, a muted color tone with his films. Um, and I do honestly love the finale of the film, like the house, like burning and all that stuff. <laughs> Catching on fire. And it looks like it's, it's a spectacle to see, honestly. And honestly, I get to say this film is really good. Um, honestly, like, probably someone could honestly do a whole analysis of the, like, say, the characters, and, like, the house, and all of that stuff for this film specifically. It's honestly a really good film. <laughs> and it's really surprised. I mean, I mean, I know, like, yeah, Roger Corman is the B-movie king. But... Honestly, this is like one of those films where I feel like, say, like, Roger Corman uh, makes you wonder, like, what, wonder if uh, like, Roger Corman could actually come back to direct films like this, too. But honestly, I think this film was honestly really good. What are your thoughts? So let's talk about the 1960 version, The ha Fall of the House of Usher. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends. And as always, don't forget to keep your popcorn warm, your drinks ice cold, and your and your eyes on the screen. I shall most definitely be seeing you next time. See you later.